moment of the game. The Red Giants finally find themselves looking down upon Falcons AP Bren, and it's now or never. Three to two. Do they seal the deal? Welcome to game number six here at MSC 2024 here at EWC with Falcons AP Bren on blue side. SRG match point on red. Oh, I was talking about the Uzong. We were talking about the Uzong, but then they go out with the Lapu and Honestly, yeah, I mean, technically it does the same thing, just not, no instant petrify, right, when you go for the Furious Dive. But yeah, finishing or even dealing with the Nether Realm would be great. Sky's already rotating up top. Kalti's gonna be caught in the quad shadow. Sky's following in forward. Go for the Shurikens here. She'll be able to do it. Sky's forward. Oh, Kalti with the help of Ogwen and Fiu turns it around. And Skies is probably thinking to himself, maybe I should have taken Lethal Ignition on this one. Oh. <laughs> Just for, I mean, it's one of those feel bad moments, but still, it's still a 50 50. Yums doesn't get knocked up, thankfully. And now that's first blood for Falcons AP Bren. And that's what you want to see, especially if you are a world champion fan. For Falcons AP Bren on the Nolan. See, it's very rare that we get to see this, right? When Wolf says that he doesn't like Falcon AP Bren's uh, draft. It's very rare to see. Usually they're always able to outdraft their opponents. I think that was the case as well up against Liquid Echo. But this time around, they find themselves in a spot where they really have to get that early lead. That will definitely help them with a lot of these hero plays with the composition to make it work to beat SRG before they get online. I think we need to take it a step forward, right? Because mm -hmm. now at this point, it's not only just about getting a lead, but it's also unlocking these laners, right? And Ogwen, he can take the damage. He doesn't mind. He opted to go for tank emblem, so he can take it for now. But at the same time, right? How do they unlock wow. them? Good zoning. This is this is a, a good way to do so. Falcons AP Brand already utilizing the Man advantage in the bottom lane to actually stop Cram from getting that cannon minion. And that will actually stop him from getting level 4, which means Kaltizi should be able to steal it or actually just take it for free. No contest at all from SRG. Yeah, a really good off-tempo play from the side of Falcon's AP brand. They decided, you know what? Hey, oh wait, you're going to get two waves in the mid so that few can actually start zoning out Cram for these bigger fights. And with that being said, that's an early turtle for Falcon's AP brand, but Kaltizi, especially with the lead that he has EXP-wise, he's going to be able to really start threatening and burning battle spells from Slango Red Giants. Falcons AP Bren, it's all about that farming now. Up against Skies on the Hayabusa, Nolan does have an advantage when it comes to that clear speed. So that's definitely something that Falcons AP Bren will continue to utilize here. Kyle, also known for his amazing, phenomenal pathing. Now a level ahead, he should be able to find another lead here because this is what I was talking about, for the Yuzong at least, right? For, for Kram on the Alapu, you're going to be great, especially in the mid game. But in the early game, if you got that Yuzong, you would be able to force to just win out this lane. I mean, I, I agree that if they want to win out this lane, but at the same time, SRG is thinking a little bit further than that, right? Because look at the nature of how these games have been going. It's yes, you get a lead in the laning phase, but then afterwards, what happens? The big turnaround we've seen from both of these teams somehow more consistently on SRG's side, but at the same time with the Lapu, you're now not dependent on your battle spells anymore, right? You don't need to have that Petrify Furious Dive to make something happen. You just brave as fighter and hope for the best. Warrior Boots first item from Cram here. He's actually going for... I wonder, I wonder what he's actually going for there. If he just wants to stay on that item. It's a Thunderbelt, though. Rushed in from Flap TZ. Kyle TZ already pushing Cram. Putting the pressure down on him in the bottom lane. He's already down quite a bit but from you know all those early ganks from few now he's going to be down even more he's going to lose an entire wave i think with the cut yeah that's Yums. a little ooh. i mean that's a little unfortunate i think that cram is going to first item war axe instead of going uh for the traditional hunter strike at this point or uh, mainly because i think when he jumps in owen is going to stop everybody else from continuing the dive you know ca really capitalizing on it and with that peel being said at with the extra spell vamp that you get from that War Axe, it might just buy him the precious few seconds. Ooh! Yom's Wild Charge all alone, though, now going to be taken down by Super Marco. Great read. And for Falcon's AP Bren, it was just about speed. SRG were ready for that speed. Exactly. Like, I'm surprised that they even wanted to contest for it in the first place. I would have think that, you know, they would have opted to just back away. You know what? Take the turtle, whatever. Maybe we can find a lane lead somewhere. 
Like and fall straight into the flicker with Love Minis Fury onto Innocent. 1v3 taken down under the turret. No trades for SRG. Oh boy. Good stuff coming out from Falcon's AP Brin. Keep in mind, the Nether Realm is still up from Few. This was a guaranteed dive to happen. Oh, whoa. Final Slash breathing out the black shoes already. Stormy kind of in a bit of trouble now, you know? He's not even able to walk up fully because he doesn't know. Where's Ogwen? Now he does, and now he rotates back towards the mid lane, wants to give that wave over towards the Harith. Yums is just holding it down. Mm -hmm. Look at this read here coming in from Few. He's going to be able to get the Shadow Stampede off, but regardless, right, Falcon CP Brent are very aware that Skies has good opportunities yeah. to actually find the side. Oh! Final Slash Flicker into the Fracture Straight into the Vengeance! Well played, Falcon's AP Bren. The combination to assassinate Skies. Beautiful, beautiful stuff here. World champions for a reason, am I right? Innocent. Zaman Force used up. Few rotating up top, relieving some of that pressure, and Super Marco is still ahead of Innocent. Ogwen again, a pinch maneuver under the turret, forcing Innocent to walk all the way back to that bush. SRG need to fight for priority here. At this point, like, Yums, as much as he's responding, he's not helping the mid-wave actually being cleared to get Stormy in a position where he can start drawing the line. By the time he gets there, it's already too late. So far, so good for Falcon's AP brand. Cal Teasy comfortably ahead one level this time around as we wait for the next neutral objective. And even in the bottom lane, SRG have already sent Cram towards the top side of the map to contest for the neutral objective. And now the bottom lane, the lead grows even more, not just for Kyle, but for Flap as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the weirdest part is the fact that Fal it feels like Falcons AP Brand are taking the page out of Slang or Red Giants' book. Hey, we're going to force you to keep answering our questions on our time. We're not going to give you that op opportunity to regroup and find the counter engage. And now with Kyle, that speed. Fracture used up the passive together with Super Marco's bullets. That's an easy take. Three neutral objectives, all the Falcons AP. Bren, no contest whatsoever. Skies finds a cross map play. But we'll have to see if he can escape from this one. Shadow Kill used up onto Flap Teasy. Cal Teasy waiting in the midst of it all right now. The stun should be able to take him down. And just like that, he didn't even use the vengeance. Stone Cold Flap. Oh, man. Sky's unable to buy enough time. I'm pretty sure he probably didn't exactly get the best quad shadow in the world earlier. But at this point, any single advantage is great for Falcons AP Brand if they want to bring it back and force a tiebreaker between the two teams. At this point in time, SRG, if they're the only way that they're going to find a big tempo play is they've created uh, create an advantage with the wild charge, right? So far, Yums has not been able to get there at the right place at the right time because of the way that Falcons AP Brand are kind of splitting them up. Final oh. slash right into the knockup. Super Marcos running like in form. You can hear him. Yums able to escape for now. No flicker on Kram. Skies tries to go for the quad shadow, just revealing them. Kalti's he's two levels ahead. Threatening. Oh, the Stormy fading on the black shoes. Oh my goodness, that damage. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Let's look at the gold difference here because right now Super Marco is currently 1,200 gold ahead, and that's not what you want to see. But even so, even Kyle Teasy continuing to be. I mean, he's so far ahead already. He is so far ahead, and I think the items display it very well. He doesn't even need the Sky Piercer, right? He thinks, okay, I'm going to go for Blade of Heptasis and then Hunter Strike, and then I'll go for the Sky Piercer. I already have enough damage early game, fool. Mm hmm. And with that being said, right, situational items are going to start coming into play, and I think it's a important that they get it as soon as possible because right now that's a three item roger and uh not exactly the best position to be if you're low slowly flap tz be buried in all in but flap tz able to find a final slash flick goes out oh and now with a capitalization fire of nature into the wild charge three members knocked up as cram gets the bravest fighter stun now the nether realm comes down a super marco deals with the back line shadow kill forced out now with the lichen form sky is very low yum flicker and now sky is going back with the quad shadow meanwhile stormy forced to use the black shoes as skies cannot go for the assassination will be forced back again it's one for all flap Going in, connecting onto Yums, but will not be able to find the hit. Innocent, with his Amon Force, turns things around, finds a trade back, and Cram is back up. Mm -hmm. Nice reaction time coming in from Yums. That power of nature saved his life from Flap Teasy, trying to go for that final slash. But at the end of the day, Falcon's AP Brand, despite trading Flap Teasy over to Innocent, doesn't matter. They got the neutral objective, and that's the most important part. Again, now with the Lord. A big one of that, guys. Jumps in, Shadow Kill, Nether Realm not up just yet. You can't escape. It's Stormy who finds it straight into the fadeaway with the black shoes. Into the turret, they find a pick. And I think this Lord 
Falcons AP Bren will still be able to utilize it. The passive was on full stacks from Few. He's back up already. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the damage dealt so far because right now Whoa. we're seeing that Few. Again, these fights have been really, really compact. And the closer SRG sticks together, the more the Ghost Burster is going to do even more damage. And man, you can just see how badly FlapTZ wants to catch somebody. Just overextending, even by a single pixel, they'll find everything. But similar to the previous game, right, we did see that, you know, on Fanny, you want to be able to kind of split push on the side of the lane. For Hayabusa, exact same thing, right? You want to kind of alleviate the pressure. Ooh. Oh, Super no. Marco with the chase down. Now Sky's going back and forth. Scratch down. Super Marco wins the 1v1. He panicked. The quad shadow. He sent it into the wall. That wasn't ideal, but hopefully they can protect mid in tier one. They will still be able to do so up top. Innocent sent to deal with the Lord, but he's all alone. He's used his mind force. Oh, Gwen. Look at this menace, Flapteezy, walking forward with the Vengeance, able to find it onto Yums, didn't get the stun. Kalteezy in the mid lane, zoning Cram away, and they are able to zone them away, at least from the tier 1 in the mid lane, getting that tier 2 up top as well. Kyle forced back, Stormy, and now Yums, great maneuvers by him with the Conceal, zone them away from this turret. Oakwen, knock up, final slash, is placing Yums, still able to find a wild charge. Kalteezy in the back, shadow kill used up, Netherrealm there to protect them, meanwhile Super Marco will be able to escape still. Dodges away, oh! flicker from Cram, not able to find it just yet. And Cram, despite all the damage, he can't take anyone down. Stormy with a chase, but then the motivation roar just gets them back up. Oh, that's a War Axe diff right there. Survive, oh, Stormy gets hit! Final slash, Stormy, trying to run away, doesn't have the Black Shoes. Meanwhile, Cram gets bursted down. Kyle Tazy gets rid of Stormy. That's a two for nothing trade. Falcons AP Bren has been in the driver's seat this entire game, but the lead finally extended from 5K to 6K. Again, it's starting to even out here, and worst yet, this could mean inhibitors. The next 30 seconds is gonna be important. Oh, final slash. Again, with the vengeance, this time Innocent able to escape those guys back and forth with the quad shadow, now into Fatizi again, very low. Innocent able to space out, Yums with the power of nature, able to escape like it. Oh! Super Marco! Again and again, finding the play! Base short number one, in the mid lane, boom! The Filipino cannon finds another! Oh no, oh no, it's starting to fall apart for SRG! Falcons AP Red, the chain deaths are happening! Minus Fury crowned with the bravest fighter, unable to find more, Super Marco continuing it! Able to flicker out to safety, Innocent back and forth, now with another realm! Final slash not connecting, Innocent cannot survive! Once again, they do it! They are showing you why they are the best in this game! Every single time you count them out, they just show you it's not even close! Match point for both of his teams. We couldn't have asked for anything better here, Mirko. Falcons AP Bren flying back to eye level against the Red Giants. Back and forth, back and forth, and this time round, we get to see, we get to witness game seven. It's been so long. It's been so long. Man, it's been a while since you and me have been on the desk and we even get the benefit of casting all seven games. Today could not be any better. Falcons AP brand, they always find a way. You look at them, you think they're beatable. They bleed and then they stomp you just after that 12 minutes. The fastest game in the series so far. Yep, the strongest mental we've seen. Analysts, it's your turn. Break it down for us.